preach to us as young people. And uh, this is not, we don't, I don't want to confine him to any segment or specialization in the ministry. But I will tell you this, if, if the ministry could use the designations from the medical field, if he so desired, he certainly qualifies to be a pediatric cardiologist. He can get to the heart of young people like nobody else. And uh, he has spoken to my heart many times, to your hearts, to your, perhaps your parents' hearts, certainly the generation before you. And uh, Jordan asked me a couple hours ago at the house, he said, who's preaching tonight? And how long does he preach? And, uh, and I said, Brother White, and as for how long he preaches, it's never quite long enough. I said, no matter what the time length is, he always leaves me wishing he'd have just kept on preaching. Amen. And Brother White, I mean that sincerely, that uh, there is something special, and as our cousin has said, so relevant to what we're fighting and dealing with, it's always the mind of God. And I want you to come and take your liberty and preach. We don't have to be out of here sometime tomorrow. And so if you leave us in the floor for hours or running throughout this room, whatever you feel, take your liberty and preach to us. Thank you for being here. Let's give the Lord praise right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Burgess, as you were making those undeserved compliments. I, I was reliving a couple of weeks ago. I was at a youth camp where in our area where our church goes to, sends the people there. And I had not preached at the youth camp, but I was listening as a young man, looked to be about 18 years of age, followed me after service and came up to me with utmost sincerity. And he looked at me, he said, Brother White, you'll You'll never know how much I appreciate you. And he started giving some compliments. And I was waiting to hear him say something about maybe some message I'd preached somewhere that had helped him. But I had taken the offering that night. And that's what was on his mind. And with deadpan sincerity, he looked at me. And he said, your offerings always leave me broke. Wow. Amen. But I sincerely appreciate the privilege of coming and being here. What a treat to be all week long where the eagles gather together. Amen. Where the finest of young people have come together and been a blessing and my gratitude goes to the wonderful leadership of this meeting that's here, to Bishop and Sister Johnson. They have the deepest respect and love that is available for all of the members of the White family. We have loved and appreciated them through the years and what they have meant to us personally. And then to be able to see 
how well that this is transition, if you want to call it that, here in Colorado Springs with Pastor Burgess, Sister Burgess. You know, there's not many examples of an Elijah and an Elisha in the Bible. But to see the beautiful, beautiful way that these two great men of God have worked together has left just a wonderful example for the apostolic movement. This year I will celebrate 38 years as a pastor in the same city, same church. When you get anywhere close to that milestone, you are praying that God will lead you to the right man that would be able to come. Amen. And you would be able to entrust them with the burden that your heart has carried for all of those years. And I don't mind telling you, Brother Burgess, I have prayed God raise up another Brother Johnny Burgess. Raise up. Amen. Another Johnny Burgess. I know you can do it. I know in your great big kingdom and economy, amen, you can raise up. And I thank you for being such a beautiful example for all of us to look at. To the ministering brethren, those who have preached, and those who have linked up with us while we preached, I salute you here tonight. Thank you for being here. I want to do my very best to obey God here tonight. Amen. And I invite you to stand with me. I'm reading to you from the gospel according to Mark, chapter number 16. Amen. Mark, chapter number 16. Very familiar portions of scripture. And I do not feel qualified to preach to you about what I'm going to preach to tonight. And I sincerely say this, there are men here that are far more experienced than I am in the area that I'm going to preach to you about. But I can't help it, as they say in Oklahoma. Amen. God put it on my heart, so I just can't help it. Mark chapter 16, beginning at verse number 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, as they set at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed it not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, set on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. I want to preach to you tonight simply about faith for the supernatural. Faith for the supernatural. I don't know anything that could fulfill the theme of this conference 
of letting God be great again than for every last one of us to leave this place with faith for the supernatural in our hearts. Would you pray with me? Would you ask God to help us? Lord, in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, that the witness of your spirit be in this house. Let the witness of your spirit be in this place, God. I pray in your name, in your name, Jesus. Every young person, God. Oh, Lord, let faith arise in their hearts, God. Let faith arise in their hearts, I pray, God. Oh, Lord, would you do it, God? I believe in you for it, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you and you may be seated. I want to preface what I have to say tonight with just two or three quick things because I will not be qualifying everything that I have to say. But if you have any doubts what my thoughts are, about Pentecostal false prophets. I invite you to buy the book of Elder Moody's life, and I was asked to contribute just a little segment under that, and it will tell you exactly that I'm not preaching about phonies tonight. Amen. I'm not in any way endorsing them or their tactics or their methods. And there are a couple of times in my life that I have been dealt counterfeit bills. And I lost big time when I took in the counterfeits. But just because I've lost a couple of time on counterfeits does not mean I stopped using money. Amen. And just because there are phonies in Pentecost does not believe, mean that we should stop believing God for the supernatural. That it should damage our faith or diminish it at all. Secondly, I want to tell you that I too was raised in Pentecost and very, very, very blessed of the generational aspect of oneness Pentecost that I have been blessed to be raised with. But my prayers as a child and through my teenage years were prayers that I would pray saying, God, let me see a miracle. Let me see a miracle. And I stand here tonight to tell you that I was praying wrong. And the more that I prayed about let me see a miracle, the more frustrated that I became. But the Lord helped me to start praying a different way and say, let me be a part of a miracle. And when I started changing my prayers to that, that instead of something that I wanted to be a spectator, that was watching and observing and seeing as a notable miracle happened, that I was now praying, God, I'm not interested in watching somebody else get a miracle. I am interested in being a part of miracles. I am interested, God, in some way, me exercising my faith to believe God for the supernatural. The third thing I'd like to ask of you is... 
You don't know as of yet how I plan to conclude this service here tonight, but I would ask every one of you young people that while I am preaching for you to be thinking of a miracle that you need. Amen. Be thinking in your mind of something supernatural that you need done in your life. Something supernatural that you are yearning for inside of your heart because it's going to be called for at the conclusion of this service here tonight, on this Friday night. I want to begin by telling you that the God that we serve is in the endless miracle business. Amen. Uh, I'm not going to talk to you about financial miracles here tonight, but I I could. Amen. And there is no shortage uh, of his power and his ability Amen. To provide all of those financial needs that are in this house today. Amen. I have been a part of more than one million dollar miracles that God has allowed me to be a part of. I don't care how big the need is. Uh, I don't care how large the financial burden uh, might seem to be. I want to tell you our God is able. Our God is able. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, you say, well, things are just going so crazy out the roof. Uh, Let me tell you, God isn't worried about it at all. My wife and I went over to the house the other day. Amen. I got to be careful how I say this because we got some young people from our church that I I just hope they're good and discreet with anything they hear their pastor say, but went over to the house of a lady that's been coming to our church, just recently baptized her, and she was talking about how that she was in charge of the of the family estate that was there and the age of her mother. And she said, Pastor, uh, I, I, I'm going to have to do something. There's a law here in the state of California that when the estate exceeds $23 million, that it changes the tax bracket that is left there for me to have to pay. I thought, Glory to God, I baptized her and her purse too. We took them all the way down in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you what, there is no limit to the power of God to supply all of the needs of his church. The God that we serve uh, has never had a money problem. Uh, He will never have a money problem. Uh, He will. He is more than enough. Hallelujah. Amen. There's nothing that's beyond his power. You may be seated. He's in the endless miracle business. Our Bibles are full of incredible supernatural events that we read about from cover to cover, from the creation to the incarnation of Jesus Christ, uh, to resurrections of multiple people from the dead, uh, amen, to walking on water as Peter was bid to come. Uh, How could anybody let doubt get in their heart uh, when it comes to believe in God for the supernatural. How could it ever get in the heart of God's people? I'm here to tell you, amen, supernatural miracles are for us today. 
Amen. The Holy Ghost being poured out did not stop with the book of Acts. Amen. And miracles being done did not end in the book of Acts. My God wants a people that have the faith for the supernatural of what God wants to do. The Bible tells us that God is looking for partners in his miracle business. Something about him that said, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. God said 24-7, I'm looking through every youth group and I'm looking to see if I can find a partner. I'm looking to see if I can find a young person that will let me, amen, be strong in faith in their heart and exercise uh, a belief and a confidence. Uh, Jesus said, when the Son of Man cometh, uh, will he find faith uh, on the earth? Now, Elder Howard gave us a wonderful, simplistic definition of the word holiness. How many of you young people remember that? Wow, what, what a beautiful thing to just, yeah, I got it. Well, I'm going to endeavor to give you just a little simple definition of the word faith. So often we think that's a hooky spooky something that, amen, only a very few people have. And, you know, it, it's hard to describe it. But really, a good working definition, if you'll look it up of the word faith uh, used in the New Testament, is simply persuasion of the truthfulness of God. It's just believing that God don't tell lies. That's all there is to it. That, that if he said it, you can go to the bank on it. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. God is looking for young partners. The term childlike faith is very predominant throughout the New Testament. Because, because there's something in the heart of a young child that a teenager but as they grow older, doubts and unbelief grow faster than your shoe sizes do. A skepticism about things that you once thought, that you once believed, starts choking out that faith that God planted it in your heart when you was a little child. If my daddy said I was getting a bicycle for my birthday, somebody better be buying a helmet. Because daddy didn't lie. And I knew the bicycle was coming and I was already dreaming about riding it. I knew he told the truth. And I want to talk to you young people here tonight because I believe there is a need for you at your age today to start exercising the faith that God plants inside of your heart. Several years ago, I remember just hearing it. Some preacher talk was around. The hearing about young John John Lambeth, who was at that time, I don't know, a young teenage boy. And that's, that's just, just a very, very young age. And about John John praying one day and, uh, and feeling like God had spoken to his heart. 
that, that uh, if he would write a letter to the churches in the United States of America, that he could simply write this letter and tell of his faith for a $10,000 offering that would uh, help expand the headquarters building that was there. And I was listening to these preachers talk about it, and they said, oh, John, John, you know, he wasn't a dummy. He knew who had the do-re-mi in Pentecost, uh, and he knew whose addresses to ask for and send it to the churches that he thought eh, it wouldn't be no problem. They'd just write the check out, and everything would be fine and he waited and waited and waited and waited uh, and kept on believing God, believing God uh, and didn't get any response, didn't get anything back. Uh, and as I heard that story that day, amen, our church was certainly struggling to survive, but something inside of my heart said, oh God, uh, that kind of faith uh, in the heart of a teenager uh, will one day be an incredible blessing uh, to the kingdom of God. Uh, I said, God, if I got to beg, borrow, or not steal, but do anything I can. Uh, and I wrote a letter to John John Lambeth. Uh, and I said, dear brother John John, uh, I'm sorry we can't do it in one installment. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what, we're going to keep on taking up offerings at our church until we get that $10,000 uh, that God promised you uh, that he would give to you. Uh, amen. God loves the faith in the heart of a young person. Nothing moves God any greater than a young David that said, Hey man, I'm not nearly old enough to do this job, but I got the faith for it. I got the faith for it. I got the faith for it. Step aside. I'm willing to let God God, use me uh, as a young man. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody, including the Almighty, responds to the faith of a young person. I got involved in missions many years ago, nothing to the degree that I am now, but I visited a lot of mission fields. And... I began to notice as I've been involved the last almost four years that the childlike faith that they have in foreign countries for the supernatural is something that all ages have in foreign countries. The grandmas have childlike faith. The middle-aged people have childlike faith. The children have childlike faith. There's just something in them that they are persuaded of the truthfulness of God. That if God says something, he's going to do it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. If God said it, he is going to do it. And usually, this has been my experience, Usually, it's not a bunch of fanfare about it. It's not them coming up after service and say, I got healed! Because it's as simply as believing that daddy promised the bicycle. And it came. As a matter of fact, I come back from mission trips and I usually two or three months later, have to forward an email to at least one of the preachers that went that is explaining about a miracle that happened one night while they were preaching. And they came all the way home completely oblivious to what God did, the miracle that was there. I just did that. Sent an email, 
and let this preacher know. And the lady testified about the message that was preached, testified about what he preached about, and the miracle that happened to them during the preaching. Oh, hallelujah. Hang with me tonight. God wants to take us some places here. Oh, hallelujah. Faith for the supernatural. Amen. Believing that God is the one in full control. We got busy in a building program trying to build a, a, a building for the glory of God, a church that had desperately needed it and got mired down and, and uh, the men were pitching in and helping out and it was now time topping out on the top floor and one of the good volunteer labors there, amen, reached down from the second floor window to reach up, amen, some metal building material that they was there and was forcing it up like that, forgot completely about uh, the highline electrical wire that that piece of metal when it touched on one end and he was on the other end uh, that it was going to be tragic consequences that was there and uh, as the, it touched the highline wire and just as the spark began to grab him and ground him to what would in just a few moments time uh, amen complete not just just kill him, but burn him, uh, probably beyond recognition. Uh, he said, I, I just had time to call out the name of Jesus. Uh, and he said, I, I don't know who it was. Maybe it was one of the brothers in the church, but he said, a man dressed all in white. Uh, he said, stepped up and knocked it loose uh, out of my hand. Oh, Nobody was dressed in white uh, except the angels of God. Uh, amen. Let me tell you, God is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. Uh, he's interested uh, in us having faith uh, for the supernatural uh, that God can do anything, anything, anything. I read you the text where Jesus is having his last powwow with his disciples. And what's on his mind, the Bible tells us, that he starts it off upbraiding them for their unbelief. And their hardness of heart. This is our last time to see you, Jesus. Can't we talk about some good, pleasant things? Uh, he said, oh, 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 I gotta help you. I gotta, I got a big job for you to do. Uh, amen. Taking this gospel to the world. Uh, I got a big job. Uh, and that unbelief will be a hindrance uh, to what I want to do through you. Uh, that hardness of your heart uh, that just simply can't exercise the faith uh, that said God can do it. God can do it. He said it. It's going to happen. I believe him. It's going to happen. He's in control. Hallelujah. Amen. He told them, go ye therefore and teach. And thank God, young people all over the United States are catching the fire in their heart uh, and taking the gospel and teaching home Bible studies uh, and reaching out to those at their school. Uh, he said, go ahead, do it. Uh, baptize them. Uh, go ahead, cast out devils. Uh, but it all requires faith. Uh, it all requires faith. Uh, if you've got unbelief in your heart, uh, he said, I can't do what I want to do. Uh, he said, because I I want to go with you uh, and I want there to be signs following. Uh, I want to be able to confirm the word. Uh, evangelism just for the sake of evangelism uh, is not enough to get the job done. Uh, he said you need me uh, helping you uh, with signs following. Uh, you need me uh, anointing you uh, and empowering you. Oh, 
hallelujah. I want to ask you young people something. Amen. Have you prayed and asked God for faith for the supernatural to cast demonic spirits out of those of your generation that are being eaten up by it? I've got the photos, my iPad. Amen. I just looked at them this week of public schools in Mindanao where the mayors of the cities have become so concerned of so many students that are demon-possessed that they have called public schools. You say, well, it's a Catholic nation. Well, they got a president that curses God. But the demonic spirits uh, are so prevalent among them uh, that the mayors and the school staff uh, have contacted the one God apostolic churches uh, and said, will you bring your youth group uh, over to our school uh, and let them walk through and pray uh, in that name of Jesus that you pray in, uh, that these demonic spirits uh, will be driven out uh, of our public schools, uh, that these spirits uh, will not overwhelm us. Uh, Amen. Oh, yes. Uh, Get it, young people. Get it in your heart. Uh, God wants you uh, to be used uh, in the supernatural. Uh, God wants you uh, to be used uh, mightily by him. Oh, hallelujah, be seated. Amen. He said, you're going to lay hands on the sick. They're going to recover. Oh, I had quite a, quite a challenge come to me. Amen. Of an expectant mom and her husband. As they came to my office and told me the story. I thought about calling up my elders and passing the hard cases on to Moses, you know. <laughs> Amen. When they, this mother with tears in her eyes started explaining to me the problem of her being expectant with a child and now being told by the doctor that as that baby grows in the womb, you have a terrible heart condition that by the time it reaches a certain week that's there. Not only <clears throat> is the baby inside of you going to die, but you also are going to die if we don't abort the baby. And they came to ask me, El Pastor, what do we do? What do we do? I said, what, what do you feel like God would have you to do? I mean, the last thing I'd want to do is bury a mother and a baby, see a daddy have to raise his other child alone. She said, well, I, I told the doctor I wanted a second opinion. The doctor got me a second opinion, and the guy told me exactly the same thing. Said, I asked him, said, let me hear the heartbeat of that baby one more time. Said, and they put that stethoscope and listened to the boom of that baby's heartbeat. She said, and I told him, my mind's made up. My mind's made up. I'm not going to disobey God's word. If I perish, I perish. I'm going to have faith in the almighty God. I'm going to believe God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And I've got many witnesses here tonight of it. Amen. As that child began to grow and as the time began to get closer to that threshold when they said, all of the tragedy was going to occur. Amen. I 
decided that I was going to agree with her in faith. And I stood and preached and boldly proclaimed that I wanted everybody in the house to get their dancing shoes ready. Mm. Hallelujah. That the dance was going to be the day I held that baby in my arms at dedication service. When I dedicated that baby unto the Lord, that we wasn't going to have the normal solemn assembly of dedication, but we is going to buck and shout and dance uh, and praise and glorify God uh, and give honor to God. Uh, Oh, uh, hallelujah. I'm persuaded uh, of the truthfulness of God. When you get a witness of the Spirit, uh, it's time to speak it. Uh, It's time to talk it. Uh, It's time to declare it. Uh, It's not time to be timid about it. Uh, Amen. God wants glory and honor for the miracles uh, that he does for his people. Oh, hallelujah. She passed the time and Everything was coming up roses. Two weeks before, her doctor, who was a Jewish man, called her up and said, I want to let you know I won't be able to deliver your baby two weeks from now. He said, but you ain't got nothing to worry about. He said, I'm going to be out of the country So an associate will have to be the one delivering the baby. Said, but where I'm going to? Said, I'm taking your file along with me. And I'm speaking at a doctor's conference. And he said, I'm going to tell them about what happened to you. (laughs) Ah, yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. And we got on our dancing shoes, uh, and we shouted and danced uh, and praised God uh, and gave glory to his name uh, for the supernatural. Uh, It's time to get faith uh, for the supernatural uh, in your heart. Uh, It's time to believe God uh, that he can do anything, uh, anything, uh, anything, uh, anything. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible said whatsoever, you may be seated, is not of faith, is sin. I'm telling you, it is a sin to let your emotions rob you of the miracles God wants to give to you. Let that emotional roller coaster take you up and down and strip you of miracles God wants to do. Hallelujah. And I'm speaking to some young people right now that are of marriageable age. And I'm telling you, it takes faith in God to not let your emotions control you while you're waiting for God to send you your life's companion. takes faith in the supernatural power of God. Oh, don't let anything rob you of that. Oh, hallelujah. Faith, faith in the almighty God. We have to rebuke our fears. We have to rebuke our doubts. Amen. But I want to deal with an area here. The last area I want to talk about is faith for family miracles. Mm. 
There's supernatural miracles that need to be done for families. For families. For families. Supernatural miracles. I have no doubt that there are marriages in this place today that need supernatural miracles done by God. I have no doubt that there are backsliders in this house. Might not show it on the outside, but they're backslidden in their hearts. Nothing but a supernatural miracle. Somebody's got to have the faith for the supernatural. God does not respond to need. He responds to faith, to faith, to faith, to faith. And I, as the musicians come tonight, I have asked brother and sister Yarbrough to come up here to this platform with their daughter Shelley. And I want to ask this family to come up here and stand up here on this platform. I'm talking about faith for the supernatural. Let me tell you what, they're not the only preacher's family that's here tonight that needs supernatural miracles from God, your family. Maybe your child hasn't gone out into sin, but you'd be lying if you wouldn't admit they've got that faraway look in their eye. And you know nothing but a supernatural miracle from God can get the job done. Hey Amen. Brother and Sister Yarbrough, come up front here so they can see you. Just stand right there. Shelly, come up front. Hey Amen. This beautiful family here, known and loved by so many in the Northwest, hey Amen, has gone through some severe severe trials. I was privileged to preach their son Larry's ordination service not long after. He was discovered with cancer and he died in his mid-thirties. A painful death for them. And I was at their place just month or two ago and we stood up at the cemetery I requested to go and see where Larry was buried we stood there and my wife and I and brother and sister Yarbrough we cried together and I listened to them as brother Yarbrough explained to me that I would rather have buried my daughter, Shelley, in this same cemetery than to know that she's backslidden. She's been gone for two and a half years. And we wept and cried. But as we drove on that day, I heard faith in the heart of this daddy. As he said, I wouldn't be surprised if she showed up for the anniversary service tonight. Hmm. And I tell you that, that moved me. It moved me to want to agree with him in prayer. And I went and prayed. 
God said, oh God, the faith is still there. Devil, you haven't destroyed the faith in the heart of this daddy and mother. The faith is still there. God worked the miracle so she'd be at church tonight. Work the miracle. God, work the miracle. Honor the faith. Honor the faith. And Shelly, I saw you before your daddy did. I was privileged to be the one preaching in the pulpit that night. And I saw the prodigal daughter walk into the lobby of the church. That look on her face and said, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Been away too long. I'm coming home. And this big old bruise and daddy of hers, you couldn't have ran the 50-yard dash faster than he did. I'm still preaching, and I'm thinking this is fixing to get good. Preaching ain't never been this much fun as what this is fixing to do. And off the platform, amen, running full speed. Like the dad in Luke chapter 15 is a daddy running to meet her in the aisle. throwing his arms around her mom and him sitting together. I thought I can end this sermon anytime, anytime, anytime. Whoa, I'm telling you, uh, all of a sudden, uh, amen, down the aisle they came. And grandparents came. And everybody in the church came and Oh, what a rejoicing. You are looking at a supernatural miracle. You don't have to know the details to know uh, that the Almighty God uh, did a miracle for the Yarbrough family. Would you young people mind if I did this tonight? I know it's a youth conference. But I just feel to ask if there's another preacher in the house that needs a miracle in your family. Another preacher's wife that wouldn't mind coming up here and standing on this platform with the yard bros. And saying, I need a miracle too. <laughs> we need a miracle too. We need a miracle too. <laughs> we need a miracle too. And as they're coming, if you can get the chairs, move back for these young people. Amen. Let me talk to you young people tonight as these preacher families are coming up to spread on out on this platform. Amen. Amen. I am going to ask you to do tonight exactly what I did last night during the service. My heart was burdened for a miracle that I have been praying for. The salt of the earth lady with stage four cancer. And I walked over to Brother 
Matt Watson. And I grabbed a hold of him. And I said, brother, will you agree with me as I pray for this lady? Will you agree with me? I don't want you young people to come alone to this altar. Even if you're already here, I want you to find another young person that you can come to this altar with. uh, And you'll say, will you agree with me uh, for the miracle that I need God to do? Uh, Will you agree with me? Uh, Amen. Uh, Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's pray. Uh, Come on, let's pray. Will you agree with me for a miracle? I want faith for the supernatural. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, pray. Go ahead, cry out. Go ahead, God, I want faith for the supernatural. Oh, would you agree with me? Agree with me. Oh, agree with me. God can do anything, 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 anything. He can save anybody. Somebody, somebody, that's it, that's it. Exercise that faith. Exercise that faith. Exercise that faith. God, yes, God, yes, God, yes. That's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, tell him, tell him, proclaim it. Proclaim it, proclaim it, proclaim it. I'm believing God for your daughter. I'm believing God for your son. I'm believing God for your child. I'm believing God for the miracle you need. These signs shall follow. That believe. Oh, God. Ah, that's it. That's it. Strengthen the faith of your brother. Strengthen the faith of your sister. Strengthen the faith. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening right now. Oh, God. The miracle workers finding partners. Partners. Oh, shakababa mayata rabakurahata. Go with us. Go with us. Confirming the word with signs and wonders. The faith of your people. The faith of your people. The faith of your people. Ah, That's it. That's it. Declare it. Declare it. Declare it. God, you can do anything. Anything. I believe in you. The prodigal can come home. Yes. God, yes. Oh. I want to be part of a miracle. I want to be part of miracles. I want to be part of the supernatural. Oh, let faith arise. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. 
let faith arise 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 oh let there's faith on this platform there's faith out in the audience let faith arise God, I believe, I believe, I bind all doubt, I cast out all unbelief. Oh! 